We are now going to go over the VXLAN, which is the data plane uh, for the SD access. And as we know that the fabric control plane is based on LISP, which has its own encapsulation. LISP has one limitation, which is that it supports only layer three overlay. And it cannot carry any MAC address as it discards the layer two ethernet header. And in a Cisco SD access fabric, the MAC address um, also needs to carry. And so VXLAN is used in the data plane. And that's why we don't use LISP um, for the data plane. We only, we only use LISP for the control plane, like we saw in the previous video. If you haven't seen those videos, go ahead and watch those videos. And, you know, and since VXLAN is able to do um, layer two and layer three overlay, we use um, VXLAN for the Cisco SD access. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the data plane versus just the regular VLAN, traditional VLAN. So in the traditional VLAN, we have inefficient use of available network links. Um, it has rigid requirements on device placement. So uh, like if we have a VLAN on this port, like if you configure, let's say uh, VLAN five on, on, on ports um, number three, you're only going to be able, you know, to, you, you're gonna have to place that uh, computer or that server on that port and cannot move it anywhere else. If you move it somewhere else, then you're gonna have to go in into the switch again and configure that switch to have that VLAN 5. And it has limited scalability as well. And it uses STP. You know that everybody hates STP. What SD, the point for S to having SD access is just to get rid of um, STP. And a lot of companies are trying to get rid of uh, STP, uh, even by, you know, by just having no layer two at all and just, just having layer three everywhere, just routing, doing OSPF everywhere. And now we have VXLAN, uh, which is flexible placement of multi-tenant segments through the data center, so you can place it whatever you want, right? And VLAN supports over 60 million coexistent segments, which is a lot more than the traditional VLAN, and it supports layer two and layer three, and that's why it's used for the, or it's used as a data plane um, in SD access instead of LISP, because LISP only supports layer three. And we need layer two for that SD access. And also it has better utilization of available network paths. And that's why VXLAN is the winner or is better than the traditional VLAN. And now we can talk about, you know, the data plane, uh, the VXLAN versus LISP control plane. So the, we are going, we have the capability over here column and we are going to see if um, LISP is, the LISP header is able to um, basically carry the SGT and it, there's no place in the LISP header um, to carry that SGT. And SGT, um, that is basically used for micro segmentation in the network. So you can basically, uh, you can even do it just based on MAC address. Um, so if you wanna segment a server, um, and only have um, some, uh, we can say like HR, we have an HR server, we only want HR to have access to it. We can assign an HGT tag, uh, an SG tag to that server that would only allow access to the HR users. And Lisp is unable to do this, but the VXLAN has a reserve field to carry that SGT and that's why we use VXLAN. And layer three extension or VRF, um, we are able to do that with LISP, um, and we are also able to do that with, with the VXLAN. And layer two extension, uh, like I've said uh, multiple times already, uh, LISP does not support layer two, um, but the VXLAN does support this um, extension by mapping VLAN to a virtual network. And then wireless, um, LISP does not support wireless, um, and VXLAN does support AP, Fabric Edge um, that uses the the VXLAN, so that that is a, a big right a big one too, because uh, Lisp is unable to do wireless, and a lot of companies right now, I, I, I'm 
I'm saying that every single company has a wireless network right now. And if you want to deploy SD access, um, that's why um, Cisco went with the VXLAN instead of going with Lisp because VXLAN is able to do a lot more than what Lisp is able to do. Make this channel grow by donating. You can go to ccdtt.com slash donate and you can either do it through PayPal or Patreon. If you select the PayPal option, um, you can select any amount you want. On Patreon, we have three different membership, three, five, and nine dollars per month, and you can cancel whenever you want. Also, if you haven't done so, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel at CCNA Daily Tips. Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys. Bye bye.